I loved this movie when I was a kid. I grew up around the block from it. And as I'm researching and finding people are, are you know, people living living like 50 feet away from me from the original game. It was a real game. So I was like, okay, I wrote this book. This is great. I met a whole bunch of people. This had some, so I finished it. I put it out. It had moderate success. I'm not saying average, but you know. And I wanted to do it again. There's a real high this. Same with the costumes. As soon as you put it on, it's like you get, like you said, the attention. Oh yeah. You, you want that attention. But so I wanted, the, I wanted the book attention again. So I said, so this is 2011 when I started writing this, and I was only doing the five at first. So I was only a Star Wars guy at the time, and I was doing it, and it, it, it was just not coming to me. And I, and I, I, looking back, I know why. Because back in 2011, I was only doing Star Wars, and I didn't have the breadth of experience that I needed. So. I started working. The book went on. The book went on hold for like four years, and then I found I I, I was I was meeting with one of my one of my author uh, heroes, and he goes, "Hey, what are you working on?" Uh, I don't know. <laughs> right? He says, "Well, I'm working on this cosplay book." Now, this author had no idea what cosplay was, and he's like, "Okay, that's cool." And he had no interest, but it was it was cool, and I left. Um, I, I left. The, his, his house and I went and I was driving home and I was, I was, I was calling, I called my friend Ned Jacobs and he said, and I was like, yeah, you know, I, I got myself in trouble. I, I, now I have to follow, I have to follow through on this stupid book. <laughs> and I said, okay. And I was like, you know, I felt like an ad, I'll, by the time I'm driving home, I'll have forgotten about it. Worst thing to do is ever to call Ned about this. Oh no. He would not leave me alone. Hey, you doing it? Hey, you doing it? No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. Oh, it sounds like Anthony with the show. <laughs> So you got friends like this too? Oh, of course. Curse them out every day too? Every day. Nice. You will be a They can be do things and stuff. Yeah, really. They, people make you do things. Yeah, right. We understand. That's it. One to twenty pounds. Form of something more successful. Form of makes people hot. So, as, as, so I kept doing just to shut him up. Because he's a pain in the butt. And I kept doing it, and I kept doing it. And then my contract ran out at work, and I was like, this would be a good time to like finish this book. Because I started enjoying it again. And I, at, at the, as time had passed, I had, done, I had gone from five, from five of first in Star Wars to the G.I. Joes. Because that's when, that when we met. I want you to have the battle. <laughs> of course. Um, the other half is running blue lasers. <laughs> The other half is red and blue lasers. <laughs> yeah, they ever, you know, I never understood about GI Joe. That's what grinds my gears about GI Joe. They're at war, but nobody dies. It's incredible. Unless it's a comic book. I mean, look at the cartoon. How many times you get to shoot somebody before? You think the, the stormtroopers are there? Imagine making a whole battle, but nobody dies. God. Did you ever see that um, episode of Hinks Community where they did the GI Joe special? I did. Where they actually yeah. did kill some people. They did kill everybody. It's like, what? They're dead? What? You're not allowed to kill them. But the comic books, they actually do kill people off, which I think is it's pretty cool. Spoiler. Yeah, they do. Well, that's the, it may be, maybe it's enough of a spoiler. It's like a trailer. You ever watch movie trailers? That's another thing that grinds my gears. When you watch a movie trailer, and then they give away the whole freaking plot of the movie. And, and it's like, why should I even see it now? I feel like I saw the end. It's exactly. like all the credits after the freaking commercial. And then when you, when you actually watch a movie, it's like, wait a second, that, was in the, that the ending was in the trailer. Exactly. It's like, you know, he sees dead people. It's right in, the, right in the trailer. <laughs> I, you're, you're, you're fulfilling your mind right now. I've always wanted to be to grind my gears. <laughs> there you go. Now I am. Oh, this camera. What grinds your gears, James? What grinds my gears? Heat. Yeah? I'm not a big heat fan. Uh, <laughs> you know, I have kind of chicken. <laughs> I, I, I love the summer. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I, I hate sweating, but I'd rather sweat than shovel. <laughs> I understand about shoveling. Because I sweat while I'm shoveling too. And that's really uncomfortable because now I'm wet and cold. <laughs> I didn't think of it that way, so. Right? But I like fall. Yeah. You know, when September and October comes, it's great because it's the furthest away from the summer that you'll be. Because your summer's over. It was always bittersweet for me because I, I loved the fall. I loved Halloween. It was my favorite holiday. And my birthday is October 20th, which is 11 days before that. So like, it was, I love the summer and I love the weather, but I was always looking forward to my birthday. And it was always like, 
like June, it's like, yeah, yeah, summer, summer, but then like, I don't want to look forward to October. <laughs> My birthday. Couldn't I be born in June? Like, my, <laughs> so I can enjoy the summer and my birthday. My birthday is right in July fourth. Two days after July fourth. Oh, there you go. So I have a nice thing to look forward to. I feel bad for people who have like like December twenty fifth as their birthday. It's like great. Try competing with Jesus. I know. <laughs> <laughs> then you just tell people like, yeah, I'm February twenty ninth. Although I'd be mad if I was Jesus. Every 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 time he has a birthday, we all get gifts. It's like, oh, my God, where's my gift? <laughs> There's a cosplayer out there called Cosplay Jesus. You know, it's a Cosplay Jesus. Yeah, Anderson. Anderson's yeah. a great guy. Every Christmas, I send him a message, happy cosplay birthday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's really cool. He hasn't cosplayed in about a year. I think he said he was going to hit Dragon Con for see one that. day this year. But, um, he also is in our Jimmy. He's Jimmy Snooker in our... Uh, yes, he is. <laughs> Superboy, Jimmy Snooker, and Jesus. <laughs> Those are two costumes. Oh, no, he dresses as uh, the Jason Momoa... Uh, Aquaman. Aquaman too, right? Yeah. And he does Vandal Savage. He's one of my villains. Vandal Savage, yes. But, so how did you get into the Flash? How, have you been always a Flash fan, or did you get into it through the, the CW network? Or? What you know? What, what a way to get into that. What a uh, segue. Right. I hate the heat. I've always hated the heat. Naturally, when I was a kid, I loved Captain Cold because <laughs> he hated the heat. I, I'm not even joking about this. So funny. This is why I got into. Did Captain you like Mr. Freeze too? Do they know each other in the comics? They have. They they, they didn't they, like. They're the same guy. Like, they're not the same guy. I know they're not the Everyone same. Everyone thinks guy. I'm the same they guy. The same, they have the same like. <coughs> no. Like, do they team up? Dangerous. They they did team up in the Justice League. They did. In the, when when all the cold villains. Two degrees. <laughs> yeah, I think Captain Boomerang was in there too. Captain, but he's not cold. In fact, he's from Australia. That's the opposite of cold. Exactly. That doesn't make any sense. I, I get it. It's DC, not, this is why nobody reads It's not Challenge of the Super Friends. The Challenge of the Super Friends. It's the greatest show <laughs> ever. <laughs> Meanwhile. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the home of justice. <laughs> that was a great show. I used to like it. Anybody watch the Super Friends? Woo! The Super Friends? Oh man, I used to watch them on Saturday morning cards. Super Friends was, was okay. Challenge of the Super Friends is when the villains came out. Well, that's when they have like, like everybody in the show. Because the Super Friends is just like the core, like, like Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, I think the Flash. Oh, the Flash wasn't in Aquaman. Aquaman was in it, yeah. Um, the Flash and Green Lantern weren't in it. I knew the Green Lantern was. I thought the Flash was part of the original team. He, he, he might have shown up, but... But then they, they, they the challenge of the Super Friends, they had, the, the, when they got like Red Tornado and like people you've never heard of just so they could justify selling toys. Yeah, but <laughs> it worked. It worked for me. Work. I had those toys. You I know, dressed up as Captain Cold because of that show. Is it because I was... From that time, but I feel like I like the toys from when I was a kid better than what they made now. Like when I look at action figures and the, and the, I mean, obviously I'm not, you know, I don't collect toys anymore. I it got to be too expensive for my hobby. But like when I look at like the Toy Biz X Men figures and stuff like that, I can, I don't know if it's nostalgia or I just genuinely enjoy those toys better than what they put out now. Because now I feel like it's like oh, it's important that his foot can bend this. Way. Like, we were lucky his arm went like this. Are you kidding? I had fun. My dad had toys that were plastic molds. They didn't move at all. Yeah. I had fun to this stumbling up and down. That was it. I was happy. It was, it was the coolest down. thing ever. It's the Fonz action. <laughs> <laughs> Warning, may steal your wife. <laughs> Fonzie was pure. <laughs> Fonzie would never do that. <laughs> but the end, I think the answer is. Um, is it, if you follow, it's with the Jar Jar's question. Well, do you like or not like Jar Jar now? I absolutely hate Jar Jar. <laughs> so do I. But I hated Jar Jar when I was a kid. <laughs> but Jar Jar. This is the worst character in the history of Star Wars! <laughs> 68, 68 voices? <laughs> it was just. It was, and then Boss Dash, really? Boss Nass, he looked like a, he looked like one of the things from the Flem commercials. What's what is it? The, the medicine for the congestion? They look like little like what, what which one is that? Mucinex. He looks like a Mucinex thing. He definitely looks like one of the Mucinex things. He put a suspenders on him, that's it. Mucinex guy. You sir no think a new sub better than we saw. He's a like a news. Maybe we saw being friends. More impressive. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, 
you know, people love to hate on Phantom Menace. I don't think I hated it as much as everybody else did, or everybody pretends to hate it. Like, like if, if you ask any Star Wars fan, do you like Phantom Menace, they're gonna like jump down your throat like there's a diving board on your tongue. But I'm not that way. I, I enjoy episode one for the fact that it brought back Star Wars. I grew up in a time, I was born in 1988, so Star Wars was dead for all intents and purposes when I was a kid. I thought Star Wars was like a thing just for me and my family. Like we were the only ones that liked Star Wars. I was the only one with the toys in school. Nobody talked about the movies. I had the old VHS tapes. We had the toys from the 70s and 80s and stuff. My brother's 10 years older than me, so he was the one that raised me on Star Wars. But then, like, 1996 rolls around, and I think Walmart started re-releasing Star Wars figures, and then Toys R Us came out with them, and I remember we ran to the store. We ran to the store and bought every figure they had, because my brother was like, you're not touching my Star Wars figures anymore, you're getting your own. <laughs> and, um, and that, like, set this, like, thing in motion that Star Wars has just never died since then, since that was the, that was the moment, 96. Because I remember when I was a little kid, like I wanted my own Star Wars figures, they didn't make them anymore. The, all we had was Star Wars Insider and Micro Machines. Those were the only things that were out for Star Wars back in the early 90s. I mean, if you went to the Disney parks, they had Star Tours, so you could buy like t-shirts and stuff like that. But outside of that, Star Wars really wasn't very available unless it was Star Tours. Star Tours was around it? What's that? Star Tours was around it? Yes. Oh wow. Yes it was. Because we went, we went to Disney in the summer of 94, it was there. And I remember that. The, dis the Lion King was a new movie the last time I went to Disney. <laughs> but, um, I mean, Star Wars just has, it's done a complete 180 in my, in my lifetime. And it's really funny to me now how everybody's like, you don't like Star Wars? But when I was a kid, it's like, haha, you like Star Wars. So, it, it, you know, the geek truly has inherited the earth. You know? <laughs> I mean, I'm a little older than you, so I, I, I went to see Star Wars when I was 10 years old. But, but you got to see the original renaissance of Star Wars, which I envy. But then, I almost wish I could forget Star Wars so I could watch it all over again. Because I love showing Star Wars to someone who's never seen it and getting their impression. Because it is a great story by itself. Whether you're a Star Wars fan or not, it's a great movie. Right. It was shot excellently. The technology that they used back then was unheard of at that time. So, I mean, it, it's it's just a solid movie series. I mean, the, 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 the original trilogy. What do you want to say the about the prequels and all that stuff? Um, and I'm really glad that it came back because I'm, I'm able to fill my room with all this crap that my, my mom gets me at. <laughs> but um, it's, it's, it's really cool to like, Go to the supermarket and get Darth Vader oranges now. <laughs> yeah, my wife's been coming home like, "Hey, look, we got this!" Like, why, 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 why is this Star Wars? On they made, they. That's the biggest advertising campaign I think I've ever seen in my life. They've literally gotten in with the farmers now. I've never seen anything like it. I thought the Ninja Turtles were there, and, and and you know that's that's another really really successful line that everybody seems to forget about. The Ninja Turtles has literally never stopped going since 1984. Since eight, or 83, whenever they came out, they have not stopped. They've had su successful movies, they've had successful video games, they've had successful um, they had the lice. toy lines, like multiple toy lines that were successful. I mean, people <coughs> still buy their paraphernalia. I mean, that, I, think, I think it's Star Wars and the Ninja Turtles when it comes to like paraphernalia. If you go to a dollar store, Pokemon. you guarantee you get something Star Wars and something Ninja Turtles. And Pokemon. And Pokemon. Oh yeah, Pokemon. I remember when that came out. No, they, that was that having a whole new real life now. That's and, and that's like the one popular thing that didn't come out before I was born. I was there for that. Your Pokemon is my a Ninja Turtles. There you go. <laughs> that's Power it. Rangers. The Power Rangers. You know? Yeah, the Power Rangers, they they were really popular, but I don't think they touch the Ninja Turtles when it comes to, to merchandising. Nobody, nobody touches the turtles when it comes to merchandise. I don't know. I did have the flip can't. head. The flip head might, might be more for Power Rangers. Anybody have the flip head might be more for Power Rangers? Oh, they were the best. You would know, like push this button on their back, and their head would flip over to like their regular head. So like you'd know like who was who and stuff. Like they had their regular head, and then you flip their head back to the Power Ranger head. And then they were the real person. They're regular, like a normal face. Yeah, it was just a regular face. They used to do that a lot with toys. I remember there was a Batman. 
figure that you could change and like you became Bruce Wayne. It was the Dollar Man one that had, that you take, it, it was, um, Maskatron. And you take his mask off and he's Oscar Golden. You put another mask on, he's Steve. Steve. And, then, and then there was, um, what was it? I can't remember the name. But there was there was like a million toys where you could like take the mask off and stuff. That was like the big, although my favorite of those types of toys, there was a Venom figure from the Toy Biz line. Had a removable mask. And see, I, I used to bring my toys to school when I was a kid, which was a big mistake. And they used to yell at me all the time when I would do it anyway. And the kids would lose my stuff on me all the time. It really made me mad. And one time, they lost the mask off of my Venom figure. Venom was my favorite supervillain of all time. So I was like, great, now I have like this almost Venom figure. So I used to mix and match. I had a, had a really good imagination as a kid. And I took like, like this leather jacket from another character and put it on and made this whole new character. I was like, if I ever became like a Marvel like exec or something like that, I'm making this guy canon. This guy is gonna be, you know, it wasn't Eddie Brock. I mean, it was supposed to be Eddie Brock on the figure, but I was like, no, this is a completely new character. I took my Fonzie doll with the thumbs up and took the, the, the lizard um, lab coat and I made my chemistry teacher. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty great. He did not appreciate me bringing that to school. Oh no! Oh no! Oh. I was like, hey, Mr. Man, check this out. It blows my mind how they make these giant play sets now. I mean, yeah, they had them before I was born, like the, the USS flag and stuff like that. But now it's like they make everything. They have, the, the, they have like a four foot Ninja Turtle sewer play set and all that stuff. When I was a kid, we didn't have that. We, we had blocks. I had, I had Lincoln logs and I had blocks. If I couldn't build it on Lincoln logs and blocks, I'd just pretend it was it. Like, I remember, I remember one time setting up all these bricks to be the trench run for the Death Star. And I, I remember being super proud of myself. I should have taken a picture of back in the middle. There was no such thing as cell phones back then. You actually had to get out of camera with film, take the picture, hope it came out in the development of CBS a week later. So, yeah, we had to mail it away for the 99 cents because we're cheap. Oh, man. But, 